Amen. Greetings and salutations in the name of the Most High God. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Amen. For this time of fellowship and time of sharing, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for the things, amen, that you're doing in our lives. And we're so appreciative. New mercies every morning that we receive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Father, give me the words to say. Amen. Guide my heart, my spirit. Oh, God, even as I speak, allow the Holy Ghost to have the preeminence in me, to stand up in me, oh, God, that they hear you and not me, according to your word, your power, and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was just getting my nightly reading in, um, and I had decided to just kind of listen to something else and not really uh, come on tonight. But at the end of my reading, the Holy Ghost said, share. I didn't even have anything prepared, uh, nothing set up, I promise you. The Holy Ghost said, share. So I began to scramble which phone I was going to use and if I was going to bring out the circle light and all this kind of stuff. And the Lord said, just share. <laughs> amen. So I picked up a phone, amen, and I got on here. Amen. And, and I was reading my study was coming out of Thessalonians. Um, and again, everyone knows that I'm an avid King James Version reader. And I have been for many, many years. But <clears throat> here lately, I've been reading out of the Amplified Version of the Bible because of its um, amplification and the way that it explains and breaks it down and, and gives you a much more clearer understanding of what it is that you're reading. So I happen to be in First Thessalonians tonight um, and chapter 4 and verses 9. Well, I'm going to start at the ninth verse and go on down to the 18th. And I want to share what God shared with me. Well, no, I'm going to start at the 13th verse. Yes, there it was. <laughs> And uh, it's entitled, Those Who Died in Christ. So he was talking to the Thessalonian church. And um, they were discussing those that had died in the Lord. And so <clears throat> Paul goes on to say, We do not want you to be uninformed believers about those who, who are asleep in death so that you will not grieve for them as the others who do not or for the others who do not have hope beyond this present world. And let me read that again. Now, we do not want you to be uninformed believers about those who are asleep in death so that you will not grieve for them as the others do, who have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God, in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way proceed into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. So that just means that we which are alive and remain are not going to go before those who have fallen asleep in death. Amen. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ 
will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up, raptured, together with them, the resurrected ones in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. Amen. So we've been admonished to comfort and encourage one another with these words. And so that's all I'm doing tonight. Amen. I, I, I was sitting and I was thinking about loved ones that have gone on in. You know, and thinking about mom and dad and my grandmas and dear cousins and and just different relatives, amen, that have gone on in, amen. And so sometimes we get to thinking about them and we get, you know, mellow, mellow, melancholy, is that how you say it? However you say it, when we think about them. And so he doesn't want us to be ignorant or uninformed about um, them, where they are, their state, amen, he wants us to be informed. And so many people have said, well, you know, you guys talk about a rapture, but rapture is not even mentioned in the Bible. And so this is why I say we have to be real careful when we read King James Version, because he uses the phrase caught up. And in the American language caught up means something totally different <laughs> you know it could mean that you got caught up in a situation uh that you were in that you didn't intend to get so involved in um you know that's our caught up amen and so we think of that when we think of the word or the phrase caught up but actually that word and that phrase is a combination of the Greek word and the, that in the Greek means rapture. So the word rapture is not there, but that caught up means that. Amen. Caught up in the Latin translation uh, means raptro. The Greek word <clears throat> translates into harpazo. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this stuff correctly. And I don't care. What I'm getting at is the fact that caught up is a Greek word and a Latin word that does mean rapture. Snatched away, whisked away. You know, like Elijah was whisked away. He was caught up. He was caught away into another place from the one that he was in. So I don't want us to be ignorant in word usage. Amen. Get your study books, just like I get my study books. You know, just don't use the Bible when you're studying. Use other uh, 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 things. Well, somebody say, you don't know about he Hebrew and Greek. You're right, I don't. I don't speak those fluently. You hear me having a problem even trying to enunciate them. But when I looked up this, I was not looking specifically for any Greek or Latin word or anything like that. But this is what came up. And I said, oh, so the term caught up in the Bible means rapture. Wow. So the word rapture, as we look at it, no, doesn't appear in the Bible. But the phrase caught up means rapture. So you can twist and twine that however you want. But the most exciting part is we are going to be caught up. We're going to be whisked away. We're going to be raptured. What an exciting day that's going to be. Now, I'm not going to be on earth arguing with you about what caught up and rapture was never in the Bible. No, nah, no, nah, y'all can go ahead and argue that. Amen. That, that's neither here nor there. That is so carnal that I, I, it just makes me ill. But the caught up part, the being whisked away, amen, my beloved family, 
that had faith in God, that, that knew God, that had a relationship with God, they're going to be caught up before me if I'm alive and still on the earth. Or if I should pass into the next life, then I'll be caught up before the believers that are left on earth. Either way, it is going to be a glorious day. Amen. And we are to comfort one another. And, and, and we're to, to give each other, amen, the, I don't know, I don't want to call it a pep talk, amen, but Sometimes we get down when we think about our, our loved ones that have gone before us. So we're to comfort each other, to encourage each other with these scriptures. Amen. These scriptures are not a one-time read and then never read the Bible again. Amen. We, we, we've got to rehearse these things sometimes over and over again. Amen. If you really read the Bible, you'll find out a secret about it. And the secret is that it tells you things over and over again, but in different ways and in different forms. But it's the same message. My God. And, and, and so we encourage ourselves with this. We encourage one another with this. And I just want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit said share. Amen. So I'm sharing. So somebody must need to know this. Amen. Your loved one that has gone on before you. If they loved God, believed in him, and had a relationship with him, amen, you're going to see him again. Because on that great and notable day, they're going to rise first. Amen. We shall be changed. Up, oh, glory, hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. We shall be changed, scripture says. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Oh, my God. I'm just getting excited about this because I understand fully and completely this world is not my home. <laughs> it is not my home. We're going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And this mortal, this mortal body that we're in, it's going to put on immortality. Y'all remember that song we used to sing um, back in the day? Let's see how to go. We shall be changed. Yeah. We shall be changed. Changed from the mortal to immortality in a twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. And I'm, people are asleep. We shall be changed. Changed from the mortal to immortality. In a twinkling of an eye. Amen. I remember we used to sing that back in the day. Amen. And the saints would just be hopping around on one leg. Some of them would be running around the church because that was an exciting thought that we are going to be changed. Changed from immortal to immortality. In a twinkling of an eye. I think the twinkling of an eye might be a blink or a flutter of the lash, the lid, the eyelid. Amen. Whatever it is, it's not going to take long. Amen. And we're going to be as he is because we're going to see him as he is. And our loved ones, mama, daddy, grandma sis, grandma Noy. Uncle Buddy, Aunt Dor, Uncle Rob, Aunt Velma. Oh, my God, the list goes on. I, Della, Elder Thomas, Tommy Thomas. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, they're going to rise before us. And then we're going to be changed. And then we're going to be raptured away. We're going to be whisked away. We're going to be caught up. And so shall we ever be with him. Amen. This is a scripture that we all just need to just sit down and just read. Amen. When you start feeling like you're missing your loved ones and you start having questions in your spirit, sit ye down somewhere and get in that word. Amen. I just happened to be in First Thessalonians 
I, 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 you know, I was just doing my study. And this was my last scripture. Now I said, I'm going to read this portion and then I'm going to go ahead on and do what I'm going to do and go to bed. And as I began to read this scripture, the Spirit of the Lord said, share. He said, share. So I don't know who is out there tonight and it's not for me to know, but you needed to hear this. Honey, if you continue in your relationship with God and hold fast to your faith, continue to do righteous things, continue to obey him in his word and love, love, love one another. If you are still alive, when that great and notable day comes, you're going to be raptured away. You're going to be whisked away. Amen. And your loved ones that we live so many years without, they are going to be changed first. And they're going to meet him before we do. But it doesn't matter because we're all going to simultaneously. There's just an order. God always has an order. And this order is that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we, which are alive and remain on the earth, we're going to be caught up, whisked away, raptured together with them to be with the Lord. I pray that this has encouraged you. I pray that this has reached who it was supposed to reach. And I'm telling you, when I read this word on tonight, amen, it leaped in my spirit. Amen. We've had so many to leave us. Amen. During the um, the COVID. Amen. When it first came out, it swept through the communities of cities and states and countries and took people by way of death. Amen. And so, so many of us were affected by it, if not directly indirectly but we were still affected amen by this thing that we had no idea of what it was that was going on what it was that was happening we ain't know we had no idea amen but we thank god for his infinite wisdom we thank god for putting that in the scriptures for us so that we would know Amen. That we don't have to mourn and cry like others who have no hope. Why? Because we have a Savior who loves us and wants us to know that our loved ones that are asleep in Him, they're going to rise first. And then you get to come to. Amen. God loves us so much. Oh my God. I thank Him for allowing Paul to write that. Amen. To encourage us. He didn't want us to be ignorant of those of us who are asleep and have gone on before him. He didn't want us crying and moping around like others who have no hope. Their hope only is in this life. If you have hope only in this life, you are of most men miserable. Because this life has no hope. <laughs> the only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The old, remember that song we used to sing a long time ago? The only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. Ah, oh, God. How did that go? I'm going to have to get with my cousin, Diane, see how that went. The only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. The only one who can help us in this world today. Though Satan's foes oppress and our heart is in distress... We have this hope, and it's in Christ Jesus. We have a hope, y'all. We have a hope, and it's in Christ Jesus. Amen. I hope this encouraged someone tonight. Get that scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Wherefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. 
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your word. It's a sure word. It's a true word. It's an encouraging word. It's an uplifting word. It is the truth. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. We thank you for the provisions that you have made for us. We thank you, O Lord, for the apostles and how they wrote these epistles. Amen. For our admonishment. Oh, my God, you have equipped us with everything we need, amen, to get back home safely to you. And we are so appreciative of that. We thank you for that. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. Hallelujah, we worship you. Hey, God, we, ha, Lord, we praise you. I don't want to get too loud because everybody's asleep, but you know what? There ain't no God like our God. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Oh, God, for your goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for your goodness in loving us and keeping us. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. We praise you. We give you the honor and the glory. Amen. Let the words of our heart, oh, God, be acceptable in thy sight. Hallelujah. And help us not to be just hearers of the word, O oh God, but help us to be doers. We need to be doers of the word. Amen. So that others can see you in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go and be blessed. Have peace in your sleep on tonight. Go to bed with a smile on your face knowing that you are going to be raptured. In Jesus' name. Amen.